Today is Wednesday, April 10th, 2013. Uh, here we are on Bowen Island, beautiful Bowen Island. And this video I'm making in particular for my spring part-time PDC students here on Bowen Island. You were with me this weekend and uh, we were just checking out this landscape that I'm looking at behind us and we made some assumptions about it and we were doing a a water slash landscape slash pattern slash how to design proper trails seminar and uh, as we know in permaculture all those things kind of fit together and I was out for a jog today and it's been raining heavily for the last uh, couple couple days now so we are uh, right now experiencing a what we might refer to as a, um, a mild but not totally mild somewhat extreme uh, water saturation event here on the upper slopes of this watershed. So what I want to show you is uh, the erosion pattern and we'll follow the water up to its source and as you can see coming down here's that erosion pattern we're looking at. You can see the gully erosion right there in the middle. We'll just follow this and as you remember from class we followed the water up its source and we can see that uh, the repair work that has been done on this trail recently is already starting to erode and as we get up to this point here as predicted uh, the water is starting to stockpile at the top here and then the little um, drainage that they dug right there is actually having its impact as you can see the flow is relatively significant and we'll just follow this up to the pathway and we'll just follow along. You can see we've got pretty significant rainfall that's happened and we've got some pretty steady flow happening here. Now here we are, we're heading up into the forest now where this water is evolving from. And just as we had followed in class, as predicted the water is coming down from that cut in the forest. Now, as I'm sure most of you know, I'm always one to admit when I'm wrong, but I've never really let that deter me from doing things because we've, we're never 100% right and we do have to do stuff. But rather than the water coming from uphill, it's actually leaking out from underneath this bank here. So what we're actually looking at is groundwater that's leaking out of the saturated forest floor and the only reason why that groundwater is coming to the surface is because the forest floor the humus layer right there it is again there underneath the trees has been cut off so what's happened is we've effectively cut off the groundwater flow and we've exposed the air to or sorry, we've exposed the water to air and to a soil that isn't nearly as absorbent as the humus layer that's sitting on top of the same subsoil that we see this water running across here. Now this leads into our next session we're together, which is on, on water. And we'll be discussing how this groundwater system functions and what this this fast flow of water, which was actually moving through the humus layer at a relatively slow rate. But what happens when we make a cut in that humus layer in the forest floor, we effectively speed the movement. We speed the movement of water through the system and thereby slowing down its productivity by diminishing its productivity. And as you can see, our assumption that it was actually the water coming down from here was almost entirely wrong. Almost entirely wrong. But that's okay. This is why observation is so important in permaculture. We always must uh, observe and interact so we can adjust our story as to this water and its source. And we can adjust it and amend it so that we now know it's actually groundwater that's coming to the surface because we've made a cut, right? And there you can see that cut again in the forest floor, right? 
And of course, this trail needs some repair because this is going to be a constant event year after year. And rather than scooping the gravel back up that is moving with this, they could actually make some adjustments. They could actually take the pathway, which is kind of sitting like that right now, and they could they could take fill from this side and scoop it up over to that side there and slope the trail off like that so that the water would shed off. And then down this side, they could make some terrace banks or some on-contour swale berms to allow the water to infiltrate back in, allow the water to infiltrate back into this groundwater system before it finally makes its way down to the ditch. Okay. And then of course, when it gets to the ditch, uh, its ultimate destination there is to run through a culvert pipe and straight down to the ocean. So we are effectively here speeding up the movement of this water through the system and thereby drying out the groundwater, which effectively dries out our aquifer. And aquifers are always a big important uh, concern here on our beautiful Gulf Islands. And if we do everything we can to get this water soaking back into groundwater, when we interrupt it, we have to interrupt it because we need roads to get around because that's, that's the uh, case when we live here on these islands. Uh, we, we, can't, uh, we can't go back to, to donkey trails, but uh, for sure we can, we can do something to amend this situation so that we are uh, recharging our aquifer because this water right now is not recharging the aquifer. This water is running away from the aquifer and uh, aquifer recharge rate is, is really essentially a function of time. So the longer water spends in groundwater, the more likely it is to get into the fractures in bedrock and recharge our aquifer. So there you go. I uh, just uh, saw this today and I thought I would send this along to my class because we spent so much time uh, talking about this little erosionary because it's such a beautiful model of water pattern right and then of course earthworks and trail design so i can't wait to elaborate on this further when you come back to class in two weeks from now on april the 20th and we cover water and of course we'll be heading out to the field uh, to our little uh, half acre farm that uh, Pacific Permaculture, Tanya and myself are renting here on the island and show you how we're applying these principles and the design of our farm so it actually catches and holds water and thereby builds fertility. So I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks. Thanks.